while, and while I was at college, I uh, it was experimenting with drugs and alcohol, of course, and uh, I didn't know what I, I, I didn't experiment. I, I imagine. <laughs> you know, I imagine. Experiment. I'm, that's a little light <laughs> statement. Experiment with it, man. I'm trying to I, be I, nice. I fell apart like a two dollar suitcase. <laughs> is what I did, but. But uh, I was just trying, I fell off the cliff. And I went out there and tested it out and then just jumped off of it. But uh, and at the time I didn't know it, but the devil had put a yoke around my neck at an early age with drugs and alcohol and, and just running the bars and running around. And it stayed with me probably from when I was 15 all the way up into my late 30s until I was born again. Wow. Absolutely, there was a lot of prayer involved, of course, and um, a lot of, uh, just planning and preparation, of course, but uh, but I felt like this was my calling, and, and um, thankfully it's it's gone well for me. Well, yeah. I can relate a little bit because I worked a corporate job for ten years, yeah. and I had to venture out in order for us to do what we're doing here. Yeah, uh, because somebody has to do a lot of the work behind the scenes, mm -hmm. and I knew I could do this part time, but I couldn't do what I was doing there and do this. Right. And so it took a lot of planning mm -hmm. <laughs> and faith steps. So I can definitely relate. But yeah, um, you've been doing the circuit now for how many years have you been in comedy? Altogether about 13. Right. So what's been your favorite venue so far? Well, uh, boy, that's a good question. You know, one of the best comedy clubs in all the U.S. is right here in Nashville, Zany's Comedy Club. And it's, it's a great venue. It's kind of what I consider my home club. But it really is one of the best, so I guess I would say that's probably my favorite. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite memory of boxing? Uh, I suppose, you know, aside from, you know, the battles that I fought and won would be uh, meeting the greats like Muhammad Ali, you know, Joe Frazier, George Foreman, Jerry Quarry, all of, you know, I, I think I've probably met 20 different heavyweight champions over the year, and so that has just been a, you know, a thrill for me. Oh, praise God. Yeah, we, we had a bunch of heavyweights come through here. Yeah, I remember, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and in fact, you remember Greg Page? He, he trained me. Tra he trained for. He trained he, me for twelve he, fights. He came out to my gym, and he had uh, gotten into trouble with the law, and he needed me to sign something saying that he was doing community hours, you know, community work. Yeah. He came back. Did that for a side. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Our oldest daughter was very young. She was only about two, and I had just picked her up from school, and she was in the back seat, and I had put her in her car seat like I was supposed to. Had her all buckled up. And here we are, you know, driving down a main road, and all of a sudden I hear from the back seat, look, Mom, I got out of my car seat. And I just, for a very brief moment, turned around and went, what? To, you know, to see. And in that split instance, a school bus in front of me <laughs> stopped on a dime, and guess what happened? <laughs> I ran in to the school bus. Of course, you couldn't even tell on the school bus, but our car got a little bit of a crunch there. A little bit. I don't think the air condition ever quite worked right mm -hmm. after that. So, but that's my story about, you know, when you take your eyes off something, even for a brief second, it can really lead you off course. I'm not a warrior. I'm too afraid to lose. I feel unqualified for what you're calling me to. Along with your strength, I got no excuse. Cause broken people are exactly who you use. So give me faith like Daniel in the lion's den. So, long story short, we dated off and on for about six years. She started going to Joy Church. The Hooten, Chris Hooten and Theresa Hooten invited her. She worked with Chris's dad. And uh, so she told me that she was starting to go to church, and if I was interested, would I like to go? And I'm like, I didn't want no part of it. Mm -hmm. What I thought about church was back in Oklahoma, and I'm not knocking all the churches in Oklahoma. I still got a bunch of friends out there. Uh, but it was real religious. It was legalistic. What I know now is legalism. Mm -hmm. And, man, if you're trying to overcome any addictions in life, man, you got to get legalism out of the way, man, before you, know, you just got to rest on his promises and rest on grace. Your victory. So give me faith like Daniel in the lion's there. Give me hope like Moses in the wilderness. I was 48 when I got married and 
And boy, what a year to get married, huh? Yeah. yeah <laughs> Thrown right into it. Hope you like each other. <laughs> I mean, You'll definitely remember it. You got to spend a lot of time. Got a lot together. of time. Yeah. Yeah. We um, we've been in my one bedroom, one bathroom, 750 square foot condo. So. Wow. I, I like your uh, your little comment you did on that. It said. Uh, you know, everybody, you dated a long time ago as well, right? Yeah, we dated like uh, for a short time, like 11 years ago, and it just didn't work out. We went our separate ways. It was fine. It was just mutual. And But now our friends think that's like a romantic story. <laughs> They're like, oh, did you guys go your separate ways because you knew the timing wasn't right, that someday God would bring you two back together? Aww. And we're like, no. No. <laughs> we went our separate ways because we both thought we could do better. <laughs> But we were wrong, and we were both in our 30s and had hope, and uh, after 11 years of trying to upgrade, we're like, you know what? Let's just put a tourniquet on this, stop the bleeding. Oh, this is the best thing the one is going to do. Try it with confidence. Ring of Faith wants to encourage you to not lose hope. It's in the darkest times that the light shines the brightest. To find out how Ring of Faith is helping your community, go to ringoffaithtv.com. Ring of Faith, helping others become a knockout artist in life. want to know how you came to know the Lord. Well, uh, you know, I was a rebellious kid in trouble with the law, you know, because of my background. I, mm -hmm. you know, was arrested for car theft at 15 and brought into the police station for assault at, at a real young age. And it was, a, and, and my mother was a Christian and my dad was uh, someone that drank all the time and stayed out and partied and was never home. But, That's my story. <laughs> yeah, my story. but you know, my mother had prayed for her six kids. We lived in a trailer court. We were considered poor white trash, I guess. We lived in a trailer court and she prayed for somebody to come and take her children to church. And a man by the name of Pop Sharnick and Stella Tuttle knocked on our trailer door and said, we're gonna start a bus ministry. Would you let your kids go to church? Oh, praise God. Wow. When I was 11 or 12 years old, I didn't want to go to church. But my mother would take a brush or a belt, <laughs> whatever it did took. what mama said. Yeah, to and she, she mm. made me get on but that. What mama said. Oh, I did what mama said. <laughs> I, got on that, I got on that bus, and then uh, there was a guy by the name of Wally Block, who was a wealthy businessman. It was my Sunday school teacher. When I was 15, just before I turned 16, he said, Kerry, I want to pay your way to camp. And I went to camp that summer. Didn't want to go, but because Wally wanted me to go, he'd been so good to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to camp, and then I gave my life to Christ that summer. Wow. But then I got back in the world for yeah. mm -hmm. another eight or nine years. At, you know, about a year later. So yeah. you know, it's, it, 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 it hasn't been easy. You know, Psalm seventy-eight, verse forty-one says how they limited the Holy One of Israel because they didn't believe. Mark chapter six. Jesus in his own hometown could do no mighty works because of their unbelief. We, God is all powerful, but he put limits on himself in this earth according to our faith. So he needed to get him away from what he was continually seeing, get him out here, change his perspective so that he could get it on the inside of him so that he could become the father of many nations. But I knew something changed, and I wanted out of these addictions so bad. So I got into the Word of God, and I mean, I tore, I wish I would have brought that old Bible with me, man. I mean, I tore the pages out of that thing, underlining. I started studying Biblical Greek, and I wanted to know, because I'd heard Pastor Jim say that uh, he was an alcoholic checking out easy at a bar, you know, when it, 38 years ago. Mm -hmm. and, and, if it, and if that was true, mm -hmm. and he's like that now, mm -hmm. He can do that for me. Amen. And he can do that for you. And it ended up, I played a show, I was in this small band, and we played our very first show, and a guy that was there had these beautiful Taylor guitars. And I met him, it was fine. He met my brother, because they were both in Grand Rapids at the time. And he said, he called me up six months later, got my number from my brother, and said, I've got to give you this guitar. God told me to give it to you six months ago. And I said no, because it's my favorite guitar. Oh, wow. 
And he said, I haven't had a full night's sleep in six months. <laughs> and he wanted to get rid of it so badly. And I was like, I can't take your guitar. I, yeah. this, yeah. I gotta, let's have coffee or something. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he, he said, no, I can't wait that long. And he drove it over to my brother's house because we were, we had just, we had our baby basically. We're, and my brother drove it to me in the hospital and I got it the night my firstborn was born. So I got two babies that day. As you, both your firstborns. Wow. Yes. Yeah. And it was the first time when I legitimately thought, um, you know, God might want me to do music. But one thing that we love about your comedy, we've watched some of it on mm -hmm. YouTube and whatnot, is that our whole family can watch. Yeah. And it's family friendly, but how do you stay funny and relative, but uncompromising in today's world? That's a good question. You know, it, uh, it really has worked to my advantage because I'm, a, I'm, I'm gonna be clean. That's just how I am. I'm a yeah. Christian and, yeah. and I, it just wouldn't be authentic if I wasn't clean. But thankfully, it's worked to my advantage because, um, you know, there's, there's thankfully, there's a lot of places out there that want clean still. Right. To be on television, you have to be clean. To do corporate events, you have to be clean. Mm -hmm. So it's really worked out well for me to get bookings by being clean. And I know some comedians that learn that later in, down the road and then they try to repurpose their act to be clean and sometimes it doesn't come out as, as authentic. But for me, it, it, it is who I am. I mean, I've always been kind of a clean cut kind of guy. So if I started saying vulgar stuff, it wouldn't even work for me. Right. People could see through it. Hi, I'm Anthony Brent Cooper, and I'm gonna share my Jesus story. I was a wild young fella. I was a professional boxer, model, and I started getting into selling drugs a long time ago. And I, I would drive out west to pick up a lot of marijuana. And my wife had been praying for me and praying for me. And so I decided that I was gonna, as I was headed out west that I was gonna, I was gonna fast and I was gonna try to meet God. I received Jesus as my savior when I was a little kid, but I just grew up crazy. I met God. And it wasn't like anything that I was really truly expecting. I met freedom. I met peace, I met forgiveness, and it transformed my life. I was so empty, so insecure, such a liar. I, would, I thought, you know, the, what, what the world had to offer me was, you know, fame, money. I was just looking for all that. But man, what I really what I needed was Jesus, and I met him. I came back home, and, you know, I didn't become Billy Graham overnight. You know, it took me a couple weeks, but... God started me on a journey and a path. But I thought since I met God out there, you know, selling drugs, this must be what I'm supposed to do. I have all this money. I can go around and help people. I was gonna be like the modern day drug dealing Robin Hood. That's where my crazy thought process went to. But God had a different plan. I ended up getting arrested. What was the scariest time of my life was also one of the most freeing times of my life. I didn't have to run no more. I didn't have to lie, I didn't have to hide. He started me on a journey and a process. About eight months later, I, uh, I was in the gym helping this kid box, working out with him, and his trainers brought these uh, producers to the gym. And they were doing a reality boxing show called The Contender. It was with Sylvester Stallone and Sugar Ray Leonard. I'd only fought like twice in five years, but God had a plan for me. I was at the right place at the right time. And during this time also, I was like, I need a church. I mean, I'd met God, but I needed to grow up. During the same time, God sent us a flyer in the mail from a local church. I'm getting ready to go on this TV show with Sylvester Stallone. The day we walk in the church, the pastor's doing a skit about Rocky. Sylvester Stallone. I was like, this is God. We joined the church that day, immediately got involved been there for 16 years over 16 years i've been clean and sober and free for over 16 years my marriage is completely restored i'm walking in the blessing of god i have a tv ministry we've been on tv now for six years teaching people how to win the battles in life with the word of god so i want to encourage you if you, no matter what you're walking through no matter what you've done or what's been done to you god has a plan 
Jeremiah 29 and verse 11, it's a good plan. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. Meet the God of the Bible. Meet Jesus, who is love. John 3, 16, God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son, that if you believe in him, you won't perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, 17, he didn't come into the world to condemn the world, but that through, through him, you might be saved. Call on the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. y'all on the show about five years ago and this is gonna air two days from five years ago oh, oh wow. wow that we aired it it's our anniversary oh, wow. so so much has changed in five I, years I feel like we were just here but I mean it doesn't seem like it was five years <laughs> for ago for us it feels like, like it was years, like 20 maybe. years ago it does it feels like <laughs> a lifetime ago yeah, it, does. it really does yeah well Crystal how did the idea of starting a gym come to go back to the beginning of that story, I have to take you back to 2009. Okay. Um, I was in my late 20s, and I was a single mother with two kids, eight and six. And I was running a boot camp in the park just to make some extra funds for the family. Um, the boot camp in the park was doing really well, so I actually reached out to Israel and um, we were not in touch at all at that time and texted him and said that I was thinking about opening a gym and asked if he would want to teach a martial arts class. So, yes. And at that time, you didn't, <laughs> you didn't share the same last name at this point, right? <laughs> no, we, we didn't. didn't. So. <laughs> but you weren't married, you right. are married now. Right. So yes. that's, a lot has happened. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, this, you know. hey, really, five years ago, Dream. we weren't even dating you. <laughs> yeah, I know. So. Wow. The show brought you together. The <laughs> 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 ring of fame. Was in the air. <laughs> I had a great opportunity. I signed with Don King back in 1997. They started promoting fights out of Nashville. I mean, they had fights every Tuesday night. It was a great opportunity for me to build a great record. But I used to drink and drugs, and I was just wild. I, I didn't train. and. I didn't go all in, so I lost to a couple people that I never should have lost to because I'd be getting drunk or high the night before and then go in and fight because I wasn't going all in. But now I have surrendered my life to Jesus. I mean, this has been years and years and years ago, and I've went all in for Him. And I've won many and many people to Jesus. We've been on TV now doing this for six years, encouraging people, helping people win the battles in life, teaching people like we're doing today to go all in. Because no matter what it is, if you're not all in, you're not going to be successful, whether it's boxing, whether it's your marriage, most importantly, your walk with God, because you have to be all in. You know, routines are very important. And, you know, we just came upon a new year, and a lot of people make New Year's resolutions. And I think that's great to make some new goals and, you know, have a great vision for the year, where you want to get to, but they fail to establish good routines. And sometimes people just, you know, see the end without understanding what it's going to really take to get there. And, uh, you know, our main focus was on movement, mm -hmm. uh, just getting people moving and getting moving better, like relearning movement patterns. Mm -hmm. um, and it kind of to tie the name in with the, the vision, you know, if you can get people to move better, get them stronger in their mm -hmm. movement patterns, and it's functional fitness. Mm -hmm. So that actually the goal is to not just get you stronger in the gym, but something that you can take into your life mm -hmm. and it kind of opens doors into you know what you can now do in your life you can go go for a hike you can play with your kids mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff yeah. right so remove training was really to try to get people moving moving better 
but also moving, moving again from, from a typical sedentary lifestyle. But one of the things we have to do on our part is really go all in with the Lord. And of course, you know, God's not looking for perfection, you know, out of us. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about a mindset of putting God first in everything that we do. So today we're going to talk about what it means to be all in for Jesus. And the number one thing that it means when we're talking about going all in is just, it's who we think about. Okay, it's who we think about. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We're thinking about the Word, we're thinking about Jesus. So obviously we're in the Word, we're talking to Jesus, we have a relationship with Him. That's all part of being all in for the Lord is when we go all in and think about Jesus. Now, but you go to a gym and you see these people just like, man, they're sculpted and they look great, you know, like a Mr. Olympia or whatever. and. You think, well, I'm gonna go to the gym, I'm gonna look like them. Again, that was years and years of just eating right and working out and not doing what everybody else is doing, not going, you know, to the parties routine. and not going exactly. It's that routine and that discipline. If you want results in any area of your life, you have to have a discipline. If you want to be an animal like me, that's right, you got to be disciplined. You got to be. You, you got to have a routine. <laughs> got to have a routine. Just not a dance routine. <laughs> not like me. Thursday <laughs> morning, uh, the symptoms were still there. Uh, I couldn't couldn't walk. If I walked, I mean, it was like I could barely stand, really. So much less walk. I could barely talk. Uh, it was it was really really scary. Uh, and at that moment, um, it, it really felt like I could either allow these symptoms to kind of take over and this was going to be the rest of my life and I was going to be a vegetable and not have any quality of life, mm -hmm. or I was going to have to really, really fight for it Amen. And, and dig down deep. And uh, that's when I sent out the text. And I sent you and uh, six other guys the text oh, yeah. you know, with very little information, but just right. saying, hey, I need prayer. And it, it really was one of those things where you know, I, I wasn't wanting attention. I, I didn't want people to know what was going on, but I legitimately, I needed prayer. It was a life or death thing for me. Um, and uh, yeah. And that's why it's so key, you know, who you hang around with, mm -hmm. who you know can Absolutely. Life and death as well. Mm -hmm. Just Absolutely. having those kind of people in your corner. Doesn't mm -hmm. mean we don't ever go out into the world and make friends elsewhere. It just means your core group, you got to have right. people you can count on mm -hmm. spiritually, you know, mentally during those tough times. You know? Absolutely. So thankful that there were people that were, were like, yes, I'm yeah. going to pray right now. Let's yeah, exactly. And I, and I sent a little message to him on the phone with a little prayer on the phone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus. And you have authority in the name of <laughs> right. Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says 1 John 4, 17, as Jesus is in this world, so are we. You take authority over that sickness. You take authority over that. So if there's anybody that's standing and you fight with them, you, you're, you're feeling good yourself, you start fighting with them. Take authority over that sickness. The world is saying so many different things, but what does God say? I am the Lord that healeth thee. Your days shall be 120 years. You shall be buried in a good old age. You shall come to your grave in a full age like a shock of corn comes in the season. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. The plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. I will take sickness away from the midst of you. The number of your days I will fulfill. I will not put any of the diseases you're afraid of on you, but I will take all sickness away from you. It'll be well with you. Your days will be multiplied applied and prolonged as days of heaven upon the earth. I turned the curse into a blessing unto you because I loved you. I've redeemed you from every sickness and every plague. As your days, so shall your strength be. I found a ransom for you. Your flesh shall be fresher than a child. You shall return to the days of your youth. I've healed you, brought up your soul from the grave, kept you from going down into the pit. I'll preserve you, keep you alive, bless you with strength. I will strengthen you upon the bed of languishing. I heal all your diseases. I sent my word and healed you and delivered you from destructions. You shall not die but live and declare my works. I heal your broken heart and bind up your wounds. The years of your life shall be many. Trusting me brings health to your navel and marrow to your bones. My words are life to you, health and medicine to your flesh. My good report makes your bones fat. My pleasant words are sweet to your soul and health to your bones. My joy is your strength. A merry heart does good like a medicine. The eyes of the blind shall be opened. The eyes of them that see shall not be dim. The ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. I took your infirmities. I bore your sicknesses. If you're sick and you need a physician, 
I am the Lord, your physician. I am moved with compassion toward the sick and I heal them. I heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, we're gonna give you an opportunity to pray a prayer right now. Bible says in Acts chapter four and verse 12 that salvation is from no other name under heaven in which man can be saved. That is the name of Jesus. Romans chapter 10 and verse nine says, if you'll confess that Jesus is your Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you shall be saved. It isn't about what you have or haven't done. It's all about what he has done for you. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, we're saved by grace through faith, that not of ourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. See, salvation is a free gift. Religion teaches you got to do all this good stuff and you take it to God and you say, God, will you accept this? Christianity, Jesus did it all. And he takes it to man. He says, man, will you receive this? Right. That's what grace is all about. Unmerited favor, undeserved access to God the Father through the Son, Jesus. I'm going to say this prayer. I encourage you to, to mean it from your heart, to say it with your mouth. Say, Father God. Father God. I come to you in Jesus' name. Come to you in Jesus' name. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I believe God raised you from the dead. I believe God raised you from the dead. I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. I ask for all your gifts. I ask for all your gifts. I believe I receive it. I believe I receive it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and verse 3, that no man or woman can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Confess out loud, Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. You just got born again. I encourage you to get into a full Bible teaching church. And if you're in the Nashville, Mount Juliet area, come to Joy Church in Mount Juliet. And if you've been blessed by this program and you feel led to give financially, go to ringoffaithtv.com, click on the donate tab. You'll find all the information you need to help us bring the word of God to the world. Renew your mind to God's word by seeing saying and believing his promises and, and that's, that's how, how you, you become, become a knockout, knockout artist in life. So Jamie, I hear your wife has a very inter interesting job. Yeah, boy, it is necessary during this time too with all this stuff going on. Yeah, yeah it's uh, Able Body Colonics, Hydrocolon Therapy, ABCHCT. Yeah. yeah, I know what you're thinking. Some people say it's a crappy job. <laughs> I'm just telling you, man, she gets home from work, she's pooped out. I'm going to tell you. Makes sense. Yeah. I told her, I said, you know what, now that we're Christians, we ought to change it to turn the other cheek. <laughs>